Well, let's bow a moment in prayer as we approach the Word. Father, we're so grateful and thankful for the privilege that we have to come together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to lift up our voices in prayer and song and praise and worship and honor unto you. Thank you again tonight for your precious holy written word. And thank you again for the great mighty one, the Holy Spirit, whom thou hast sent to indwell us and to be our teacher and guide. And we trust him tonight to unveil the word of God unto our spirits. We pray for all of us that we'll be doers of the word, not just hearers only. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, before you see them, turn around and shake hands with your neighbor. Let them know you're glad they came tonight. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, you can open them with me to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to begin to read with the, uh, 50, with the 16th verse of the first chapter of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. And we'll read down through the end of the chapter. Here Paul said, See, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that's named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Then I want you to turn to the third chapter of the book of Ephesians. And we're going to start reading here with the 14th verse. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ with passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Hallelujah. Now these two prayers are Paul's prayers for the church at Ephesus, for believers. But these prayers of Paul can apply to you because they're spirit-given and spirit-anointed prayers. They're given by the Spirit. Paul is writing under the inspiration and unction of the Holy Ghost. So they're given by the Spirit of God. You can pray these prayers for yourself. Wherever Paul says you, he said, I pray that you or ye, we don't say ye, thee and thou today, you in other words. Wherever he said you, you can put me in there, yourself. Amen. Amen. Notice again here in, the, in this opening in Ephesians 3, 
For this cause I bow my knees. Well, we can just put myself, ourselves in there and say, I bow my knees. Amen. Unto the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, of my Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant me. Now see, Paul said that he would grant you, or ye or you, but that he would grant me according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in my heart. Hallelujah, by faith. Paul in his prayer said that Christ, writing to the church at Ephesus, may, may dwell in your heart. I can remember the last church that I pastored 1946 through 1949 and in the uh, winter of 1947-48 I just uh, did a lot of extra praying and I, I kept my Bible our Parsons was right next door to the church and I kept my Bible lying on the altar bench we had an altar bench here in front of the platform open to these two, two openings here and every opportunity I got, I, I, I must have prayed these prayers over and over for myself a thousand times, probably more than that. Because, you see, if, if this is given by the Holy Ghost, and it never loses its inspiration. Amen. 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 And, and so, uh, I, you know, I'd go on about my pastoral duties and whatever else I had to do. But every opportunity I had, I'd just go and kneel. I'd bow my knees. Paul said, here I bow my knees. And I'd say, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'd say to him, I'm praying these two prayers for myself. And, and I must have done that, as I said, over and over and over and over again, sometimes several times a day. Well, after I'd done that for several weeks, you know, for several weeks, I couldn't tell any difference. But after I'd done that for several weeks, now you'll notice here that one thing he's praying for in this very first prayer is that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you, that means unto me as I prayed it, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Amen. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Another translation said the eyes of your spirit being enlightened. And so, after a number of weeks, and I don't know, like I said, how many times, I didn't keep count of that I'd prayed these prayers for myself, revelations began to come. I'm talking about revelation in line with the Word of God. Until I said to my wife, you know, uh, what in the world have I been preaching? You know, and I'd been in the ministry for 14 years. And, uh, but, but in six months' time, praying these prayers for myself, in six months' time, just by revelation, not reading any other book except the Bible. Now, I did look up, you know, getting messages ready, you know, and so on and so forth. Did some research. But I, I, I received so much revelation in six months' time from the Word of God. That's what he's talking about, revelation of the knowledge of Him. Until it just seemed like I was a brand new person. And I said to my wife, what in the world have I been preaching? Seemed like just what I'd been preaching didn't amount to too much. And, uh, and, and so then one day I was praying there around the altar and the Lord said, I'm going to take you on to uh, revelations and visions. And that came as a result of praying these prayers thousands of times for myself. Revelations like I said kept coming, winter 47, 48, 49. And, and then in 50 the visions started coming. There's two, three years about them coming. And from... Uh, uh, 1950 through 1959, the Lord Jesus himself appeared to me eight different times. And three out of the eight, he talked to me for as long as an hour and a half and brought further revelation concerning the word of God. And so uh, uh, one, one, one revelation, though, that the Spirit of God brought to me was concerning the authority of the believer. And that's the reason he wanted you to get this revelation. Now notice in Ephesians, the sixth chapter and the twelfth verse, it said, For we wrestle not against the rulers of the darkness of this world. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, you know it said. 
but he said we do wrestle against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, or the margin said in the heavenlies. You see, we need to realize though, that, we, though, that though we may be wrestling against these things, yet we have authority through Christ over them. This authority is not the property of just a select few. Sometimes somebody think, well, you know, they, uh, they, they, they are a minister or they are an evangelist or they are a pastor or that person some great mighty saint of God. But you know, they don't have any more authority than you have. Amen. Amen. This authority is the true possession of every child of God. Amen. Belongs to every one of us. Now notice Ephesians, the first chapter and the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now American Revised Version says, with every, instead of saying all, every spiritual blessing, all or every interchangeable. In, in other words, in Christ, all spiritual blessings belongs to us. Amen. Amen. Now notice, go back here to this uh, a little further down. We're there in the third verse of that first chapter of Ephesians. But now go back again to the prayer that Paul prayed to, for this church at Ephesus. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now notice, in the knowledge of him. I think we could paraphrase that like this: in the knowledge of being the uh, the knowledge of being in Him, Amen. Because you see, blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all or every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. You see, this is our promise. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Now, you stop and think about that a little bit. You know, we look on certain people and we think, well, they're especially blessed of God. Uh, you, you, you don't find that in the scripture anywhere. He said here that he's blessed us. Paul, when he said us, that meant Paul and the church at Ephesus. And it belonged to the church in Tulsa or the church wherever you are or wherever you're from. That, uh, that nobody's got a corner on it, you see. Nobody's blessed beyond it. Now, now some folks may know about it and be enjoying it where others don't. But in reality, no one is blessed beyond someone else. We need to know what belongs to us. But just knowledge isn't enough. Knowledge acted upon brings results. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Authority belongs to all the children of God. Now, the devil doesn't want the people of God to find out what belongs to them. Amen. So, he obscures the knowledge or the truth because he endeavors to defeat the child of God and he knows that the child of God, when they know their authority and they know what belongs to them, the devil knows that they'll enjoy victory over him. Amen. So, that's the reason he tries to obscure this knowledge and keep it from people. That when the child of God knows the truth and has gained the knowledge and acts upon it, the child of God is no longer dominated by the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The child of God will enjoy the reality that rightfully, rightfully belongs to him. Now notice John the 8th chapter and the 32nd verse, Jesus said, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now it isn't just that the truth will make you free. It's knowing the truth. And I'll say also acting on that truth that makes you free. Now let's notice in Luke the 10th chapter, the 19th verse. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now I want you to notice that in this, I read King James translation, 
that the word power is used twice in this verse. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. The word power is used twice there. But there are two different Greek words that are used here. They're not the same word. Jesus actually said, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Amen. You see, uh, this Greek word first is translated power. If you look it up in the Greek concordance, also means authority. And read it would be better there. It would be better there if it had translated that authority because you'll understand your authority. Because you see, if you keep the word power there, people think, well, I've got the power. You know, I've got to, and then they sort of shake themselves and said, well, I don't feel any power. Well, it, it's just sort of like this. Did you, did you, you ever drive down, you know, about uh, time people are getting off from work, you know, somewhere, and, and uh, lights have gone out or something, there's a policeman there directing the traffic, and he'll have folks to come this way for a while, then he'll just hold up his hand, and everybody will stop. Well, now, he don't have the power to hold those cars back. <laughs> All of them. He don't have that kind of strength, but he's got the authority to do it. And we recognize that authority and we honor that authority. I mean, I just to come in the other day, you know, out here to school and they was doing some work over here on 61st where the, the, the freeway's coming through there. And because some trucks was crossing it, well, there's a fellow there, stopped me, you see. Well, I, 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 honored, I honored that, I stopped. Everybody stopped behind me. Well, that little frail fella couldn't hold back all of those cars if they'd wanted to go. He didn't have the power. But he's got the authority. And I recognize the authority. You know the devil recognizes authority? Amen. He recognizes authority? Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Praise God. Amen.